Would you like 2021 to be the most successful year of your life? Are you ready to move forward and not just stand still? My name is Brent, and I am the Fallible Man. If we're meeting for the first time, it's nice to meet you guys. Welcome to the Fallible Man Podcast, your home for all things man, husband, and father. We provide content to help men become the men they want to be. Guys, on today's show, I'm really excited. Trying some new formats here. Hopefully, uh, this comes out okay. But on today, we're talking about six things you can do to make 2021 the very best year of your life. Be sure and stay with us to the end. I'll let you know the key secret to making this all work together to make it the best year possible. Be sure and to follow us or subscribe on Instagram, Facebook, whether you're on podcast format or YouTube or anywhere you want to be, you guys. We're there. Our social media is everywhere. And we are interested in having a relationship with you if you want to be a better man tomorrow. I apologize if you're catching the video format of this, if I turn away from the camera a few times. Like I said, I'm trying a lot of formats, uh, a lot of new changes to our second season. And guys, welcome back. If you are coming back for the second season of the Fallible Man podcast, and if you're joining us for the first time, we're so glad you're taking the time to hang out with us. We're going to go ahead and go on with the show, guys. This is the Fallible Man Podcast, your home for everything man, husband, and father. Here is your host, the Fallible Man, Brent Dowen. Go have your cup of coffee and join us, guys. Hey, I'm not surprised that you're interested in having the best year of your life. Let's face it, 2020 was not a great year for everybody. Um, a lot of people struggled in 2021, or sorry, in 2020. So we're all looking towards 2021, hoping for a better year. And guys, I'm telling you, it's incredibly possible. So I know 2020 was a horrible year for a lot of people, but if I'm honest about it, and I look back over the year from me, there was a lot of horrible things going on, but it wasn't the worst year of my life. In fact, it was a pretty decent year for me. Now, that seemed a little odd to me because... I know how bad it was for a lot of people. I know a lot of people who have been affected incredibly by 2020. The coronavirus has, you know, swept the world and affected everybody. And we're all a little tired of it at the same time. But I know it impacted a lot of people. I know a lot of people lost their jobs and that was horrible. So I started looking back over 2020 to figure out for myself, why was it that 2020 was a pretty decent year for me, actually. Despite all the horrible, despite all the problems, why was 2020 a pretty, pretty standard year for me? So, today's show is about that, okay? I, I compiled my list for 2020 and why my year went better than a lot of people's did. And that's not a brag, guys. That's just how it turned out, okay? I compiled a list because I want your 2021 to be an incredible year. Now, my list doesn't have to do with your job necessarily because I know I was considered essential. And if you're on the podcast, guys, I'm definitely doing air quotes on that one because I think everybody's essential. If a job pays your bills and pays for your family, (laughs) that makes you an essential job to me. So I don't know what that's about, but. Whatever. Everybody's essential as far as I'm concerned. But I was one of the lucky ones who my job was considered quote unquote essential. So I took that into consideration as I was making my list and compiled a list that doesn't have to do with whether you were employed this year or not. That's irrelevant. So even if you're out of work, even if you lost your job this year or got laid off and God knows, you know, I'm sure you're tired of hearing that all our prayers are with people who are in that situation because it's a horrible situation to be in. 
but guys, it doesn't matter if that's your situation. This list still applies to you. 2021 can still be the best year of your life. No matter what the circumstance is that you're dealing with, this list still applies. So let's get into it right now. First off, the first thing I want to talk about is it's time to get your finances in order, guys. One of the things that really made 2020 a good year for me was 2020 is the year that I actually finally got my finances in hand. And I'm not saying like I make so much money that my fan I'm I'm good like that. What I'm saying is I finally took charge of my finances. There's all kinds of things that I had no idea about my finances at all. In fact, January 2020, uh, I had some changes that I was looking at on an account. I got a notification from my work 401k that they made some changes, and I realized I had never looked at my work 401k, and after five and a half years, I should probably look at it, right? Or six years, whatever it's been there. I should probably actually know what that says. And guys, at that point in my life, a 401k was just something they told me on an interview. I I honestly had no idea what it was or how it worked or anything like that. So I clicked on the link in my email for work and found out that I had a 401k that had been sitting there that was rolled over from my old company, but it was sitting there in a money fund, which is a really safe place for it to be, but you're not going to make any money. It's not going to do anything for you in a money fund. And so I was just flabbergasted because I, I didn't even know what a money fund was when I looked at it. I had to start looking into this. Well, the more I looked into it, the more I found out I had no clue. Like I had zero financial education. And that was the start of a year-long journey for me. And in this last year, that has been a huge focus of my 2020 was just becoming financially literate and understanding my own financial situation. Sorry if the breathing is a little heavy on this, guys. I'll try and edit it out. I am working with a new audio setup, so if it's a little crazy, forgive me. Trying to make it better, but, you know, there's always some growing pains when you're making it better. So, here's how you go about this, okay? First, you need to do a financial audit of your life. Find all of your lost money. Well, sorry, I'm getting ahead of myself. So, do a financial audit of your life. Go through your bills, go through your receipts, find out exactly where your money is going every single day and every single week. Journal it, budget it. I'm going to say in a minute that you need to get a budget or have a budget. If you don't, I didn't have a budget for years. Thank God my wife is better about this than I am. But you need to have a budget. And this is part of that. This is the first step of that. Is you need to audit and know exactly where every dollar of your money is going. If you don't, you're not squared away on it, guys. It's, it's huge. You have no idea how much money you're probably leaking just because you don't know where it's all going. So going into that, you need after that, you need a budget. You need to look at the money you have coming in. And you need to look at how much is coming in, when it's going out, where it's going, who it's going to, and what all the little nickel and dime charges are that you have because you have a ton of them. I recently did a blog post, I think it was a blog post, it might have been a podcast. I don't know, I do so much media, guys, it's kind of getting confusing these days, which one's which. But I recently did a blog post talking about, I had this inner monologue with myself the other day on the way to work, because I wanted to stop and get an energy drink. And my brain went, eh, you know, go by and get an energy drink, they're two for four dollars, which comes out to like four dollars and twenty-three cents, but they're two sixty-nine dollars apiece, so go ahead and get two. My brain went, wait, you're going to spend four twenty three on two energy drinks and you're going to get a cup of coffee when you get to work anyway. What are you doing? That's money that could be invested. That's money that could be saved. That's money that could go to something that actually matters. So you need to have a budget. You need to know where all that nickel and dime stuff is going. Because I, I realized I was going to the gas station like, Sometimes twice a week, so that's eight dollars and fifty cents a week on energy drinks, just just for going to work. Guys, I drink coffee all day at work, so there's no reason why I need to get that energy drink. 
Caffeine doesn't affect me anyways. I drink coffee all the way till I go to bed. I've already had over a pot this morning. And it's only like 11 o'clock. Or, well, it's noon now. So, know where your money is going and why it's going there. That's part of being, having a good budget. Okay? You need to round up any kind of savings or investments accounts that you have. Like I said, when I went to look at my current company's 401k, I found out that I had a rollover 401k from my last company. Well, intellectually, at some point, I probably knew that, but I had no idea what happened to it when it rolled over. And what I did find out is (laughs) it rolled over and just sat there for six years doing nothing. Six years that thousands of dollars could have actually been working for me was sitting there basically collecting dust in the money fund, guys. So I started auditing all of our 401ks. I found out I had like two more, but I had no idea what they were. I didn't even know how to get a hold of them or how to find them. I looked into my wife's accounts. My wife had two or three 401ks that she has no idea or had no idea how to contact people, how to get a hold of them, how to access them. So we spent the last year just going through and finding all those old 401ks and consolidating them to one spot so at least they're managed and we know what's going on with them. So go through and find all your old 401ks, all your retirement accounts, any savings account. You need to know where that's at. And then get to know your current 401k. If you're employed, if you're fortunate enough to still be employed and have a 401k, guys, you need to get to know that and how that one's working as well. Okay? You need to know... You need to know what you do and don't really need to do with your spending right now. Okay. And that's part of this audit idea. Like I said, I realized I was spending between four to eight dollars in energy drinks just, just going to work. That's not stopping there any other time. So I'm easily spending probably between twelve and twenty dollars a week at the gas station buying energy drinks I don't need. Haven't had one since January 1st. Maybe why I drank a whole pot of coffee this morning. No telling. And like I said, I drink coffee all day. So guys, audit your life. Find out where that money is going and find out if it really needs to go there. That's step number one. Step number two. And guys, be sure and give us a review on Apple Podcasts, Podchaser. Smash that like button wherever you are if you're getting something out of this as we go into point number two. Point number two, guys. Turn off your television. Like, seriously, turn off your television. One of the greatest things I did in all of 2020 was I stopped watching television series. I started looking at my life and I realized just keeping up with all the TV series I actually like to watch, my goodness, I was spending 20 hours a week or more staring at a television screen watching TV. Guys, unless you're watching nothing but educational shows, I promise you, you're not getting any benefit from sitting in front of the television at all. And it frees up so much time. It started with me going, deciding there was too many TV shows I was watching. I just didn't have enough time to watch them all. And so I cut some out when I did that. Because there was just no way to keep up with all the TV I was watching and stay current on it. Right? It was just eating all of my time. So I pared them down some. And then on further reflection, I just started paring them out, period. I realized how much time I was selling at a television. Guys, I have so many people tell me I don't have time to get in shape. I don't have the time to eat healthier and make home-cooked meals. I don't have time for... Insert the excuse, guys. If you're watching television, you have time. You're just wasting it. It's that true. And I hate to be that harsh about it, but it's true, Okay. Read or listen to the books. If you've heard of the other podcasts earlier this year or last 2020, you know that I got into Audible. I got into audiobooks. I love audiobooks. I listen to them when I'm driving now instead of music a lot of times. I listen to them when I'm walking. I love audiobooks. I have written, re, I've written, <laughs> I wish. I have read so many more books this year than I have in years because of audiobooks and I absolutely love them. Also, hey, if you're catching this on YouTube, be sure and check out our uh, upcoming video, Three Books Every Man Should Read. And I'll, uh, you can check that out later on the YouTube channel. But guys, you can read during that time, right? 
check out audiobooks, check out regular books. I love the feel of books. I love the paper. I love hardback books, but I also have, I have a ton of books. In fact, if you can probably see behind me on the camera, I have a bookshelf, honestly, on each side of me right now. And those are just two of the bookshelves in my office. That's not even the bookshelves down in our bedroom and in my living room and everywhere else. My wife and I are avid readers. Read a book. You will get so much more out of it. Even if it's a fiction book or an entertainment book, it's better than the show nine times out of ten. Watch, you know, ask anybody who ever saw them butcher a movie about a great book. Use the time to exercise. Use the time to learn new skills. Like I said, I was burning like 20 hours a week. Use the time to get new skills to make your life better. That's number two. Guys, number three plays right into number two, and it's stop wasting your time. You have no no idea how much time you are wasting on a regular basis. I highly encourage you. This is a crazy, crazy thing to do. Audit your time. Like, actually sit down and audit your time. Or better yet, get a little phone app. Like, you know, Google Notes is free, right? And literally chart every minute of your day as you go. Just do it for two days. Yeah, I know that takes time too. But do it for like two days and you will be blown away if you actually are honest and put like record every little bit. It's like when you start uh, recording your nutrition. If you've ever done that before. When you first start recording your nutrition, like your macro nutrients, like diet stuff, (laughs) you have no idea how much you have been eating and how much junk you eat that is not healthy for you and how fast those calories add up until you start tracking that stuff. Likewise, until you audit your time, until you look at what time you have in the day and how you're actually spending it, you will have no idea, no idea how much time you're wasting every single day. Phones have this great setting now for tracking your time. (laughs) I did this this morning before the show. I am really, really careful about my time, how much time I spend on my phone. My average screen time on my phone is 56 minutes a day. And that's for someone who is like obsessive about only being on my phone as much as I absolutely have to touch it. I don't play games. The only social media I do is for this channel. Um, I, I do my banking online, but if I don't have to touch my phone, I don't t- touch my phone. In fact, my wife can attest how often I actually forget my phone these days because I just try not to touch it. But iPhones and Androids both have the ability to check your screen time now because people have realized that it's getting absurd how much time people are spamming on their phones. So I dare you, pause the show, go right now, comment below. Let's see if you're honest. Tell us what your screen time is on your phone down in the comment below. All right, I'd love to hear it. Shout it out, guys. Phones are set to be addictive. What do you do when you sit down in a computer, right? Have you seen the national averages on how much time people spend checking email every day? It's insane. I work in the IT industry, full-time in the IT industry, guys. I have two different business ITs or two different business emails I have to check at work. I have my personal email. I have two different business emails for the fallible man. And I have my junk email that I use to send for marketers who are just going to send me stuff anyway. By the way, you can get our mailing list if you'd like to. We have a mailing list and we send out stuff monthly to tell you what you're doing. Well, I mean, what we're doing right now. And guys, I don't spam you guys. That's why I only send like one email a month. It's just to catch up for what's going on with the fallible man if you're interested in it. But you can go to the website, www.thefallibleman.com and check that out. But audit your time. Like, seriously, when you're sitting at your computer, what are you actually doing? How much of that is necessary? How much of that do you really need to be doing? And how much is it actually doing for you? Now, on that note, guys, we're going to roll to today's sponsor. And uh, we'll be right back. Today's episode brought to you by thefallibleman.com. That's right, it's us. Head over to www.thefallibleman.com and check out our blog, updated twice a week with new content, and links to all of our social media offerings. 
tag or search us at The Fallible Man or at Fallible Man on Facebook, Instagram, Twitter, and other social medias for daily content. While you're there, check out our Attitude Swag, shirts, cups, stickers, and more. Again, that's www.thefallibleman.com. All right, guys, welcome back. Hey, if you're watching the YouTube video, if you hadn't seen our cups, we have a merchandise on our website. Great for coffee. This is a magic mug. I honestly just made this for myself. It is totally gimmicky and a lot of fun. The mug is black until you pour something hot in it, and then it reveals the image. It's like the old magic pins and junk like that. It's, it's really kind of stupid and gimmicky, but I kind of love it. I honestly designed these on my shop just for me because I wanted one. But hey, if you like the gimmicky stuff like I do, be sure and head over to the shop and kit yourself with one. Uh, you too can have a fallible man mug. They're not that expensive. And guys, hey, if you're watching this on YouTube, be sure and hit the bell notification. Sorry if I just hit my mic. And uh, that way you're notified every time we upload a video. We don't just load the video podcast on YouTube. We also have fitness that we do. Uh, we're actually excited because we're pa- partnering with one of our sponsors at Coma Man OCR to start doing our fitness video, some of our fitness videos with them as well. Uh, and guys, it's about everyday fitness. It's for guys like you or me or anybody else who, you know, maybe you need to lose some weight or maybe you're just not at your best shape that you've ever been in. Guys, it doesn't matter. We're here for you. Dave over at Common Man OCR is my good friend and he's a 20 plus year veteran of the IT industry and that he's on a journey. He's trying to better himself. We're not fitness crazy like some of these YouTube channels that just, <laughs> they look like they fell off a magazine cover. We're everyday guys with lives and responsibilities and time crunches. So check out those videos. We also have some videos on cooking because I think every man should be able to cook and all kinds of other videos. Uh, I just did a doodly video yesterday, which is awesome. I love that stuff. It's my first one. And so head over and subscribe to our YouTube channel, guys. Get more content from us besides just our podcast, but we're glad you're here on the podcast too. Man, I love just spending time with you guys, and I'm glad you're here. So back with the show, guys. Number four. Oh, I'm getting through this list faster than I thought I was, so let's keep going, right? Find somewhere or something to volunteer with. Guys, this is so this is so crucial to help you have the best year of your life. I'm not even exaggerating this, okay? There are so many options. You can volunteer with schools. You can volunteer with church programs. You can volunteer. volunteer. Let's see how many times I can say volunteer. I'll just read off a list. How's that? You can volunteer with schools, churches, Boys and Girl Scouts, Habitat for, Hu- Habitat for Humanity, um, the YMCA, all kinds of after school programs. You can volunteer with homeless shelters, with nursing homes. Well, Nursing homes might be a little hard right now because they're only letting, you know, people in for safety reasons. But hey, go clean the outside of the nursing home up. You know, do some gardening for them. I worked in a nursing home when I was a kid and we had a guy who liked to come over and just do gardening. So he made it pretty for the residents. It was great. Okay. You can volunteer with local clubs. There's generally a lot of really local clubs uh, that around town that people don't even realize are there. But guys, go volunteer your time. You're only limited by your imagination. And look, I understand time constraints. I'm incredibly busy just like you are. But make some time to do some volunteer work, guys. And maybe the reasoning is selfish. But one thing I found as a youth minister a long time ago with doing mission trips and doing volunteer programs with the church was the people who volunteered often got so much more out of it than the people who were being helped. Volunteering will help change your life and make you a better person. It will change your perspective. Guys, go volunteer your time. Get active in your community somewhere. There's something you're passionate about, something you care about. There's lots of opportunities. Go volunteer this year. 
Number five, be more active. Guys, science has proven beyond a shadow of a doubt that your body works better if you're more active. Not only does your body work better, your brain works better if you're active. You know, I said earlier in the show, get out from in front of the television, well, here's your chance. Get more active. And maybe you're not a workout person. Maybe you're not big into the gym. That's fine. It doesn't matter. Okay? Um, I told you I'm doing some partnering with at Common Man OCR. Dave and I both have our own little tricks for how we get more active. I put on an audiobook in my headphones, and on my lunch break at work, I walk for 30 minutes. I have 30 minutes guaranteed for my lunch, so I walk laps around my building for 30 minutes while I listen to an audiobook. Two birds with one stone, guys. I love to capitalize on making the most of my time. So I listen to an audiobook while I'm walking. I'm getting it to move and I'm learning something new. It's amazing because I don't generally listen to fiction books. I generally listen to business and finance and educational kind of stuff. So I know I'm a nerd. I single track mine. My buddy Dave at Common Man OCR, he actually has learned that a lot of his teleconferences where he isn't required to be there in person, right? Where he's not like a video conference. Uh, even some of his in-person conferences, like with one of his bosses, they go for a walk around the facility they work at while they have their conference. They do their in-person conferences while they're walking. He does his phone call conferences while he gets up and goes and walks. When he's working from home, he has a uh, one of those workstation bikes that he likes to use for at least part of the day to keep his feet moving because he knows he's sitting in front of a computer. Be more active, okay? You don't have to you don't have to go get a gym membership to be more active. You just have to get up and move. Something I hadn't told anybody I'm doing right now is uh, I decided that this month I want to knock out between 75 to 100 push-ups every day just cause, right? It was a physical challenge. I needed something to do because my gym schedule has been a little irregular. Guys, there are ways, but being more active helps your whole body. It helps your mind. It helps you emotionally. Get active. It will make your life better this year, like incredibly better. I'm not exaggerating that. And hey, maybe you want to join Common Man OCR and I and hit a couple Spartan runs or some Tough Mudders when those are coming back. We'd love to see you out there. Maybe you want to join the gym, but just do something physical, guys. Get moving. Hey, and be sure and leave us a comment on whatever platform you're on. Uh, we'd love to hear from you. We'd love to hear if you're planning to take any of these tips to heart and do any of them. Maybe something you know how you can apply this to your life. We'd love to hear all about it. Go ahead and uh, let us know down in the comments. We'd love to hear any suggestions you have as far as our partnering with this, okay? We love to hear from you guys. Point number six. I, I can't hold up six fingers if you're watching the video because uh, I'm holding a tablet in one hand, and if I drop that, I'm going to kick myself really hard. Learn a new skill this year. Okay, At the Fallible Man, we're incredibly, incredibly serious about incremental improvements every day. And when I, I'm seriously talking about Incremental guys. I'm not saying you have to be a new person tomorrow. We believe in incremental improvements. Okay. I have a background in working out and stuff like that and lifting. And so when you're coaching somebody at lifting and you say incremental improvements, they're like, Oh, I, I've got to, I've got to add more weight to the bar. Well, that's one way to improve. Maybe you add one more rep. Maybe you add one more set. Maybe you do it faster than you did it before. Maybe you did it with more control and you know less struggle than before. These are all improvements. Well, likewise, we're into incremental improvement, guys. Learn something every day. Improve in some way every day. Some days that's just how you handle a situation. Some way that's controlling your temper. Well, Here's something big. And guys, it can be 
it can take be something that's going to take you months. It can be something that's going to take you all year. But learn a new skill this year that will help you improve your life. It can be a new skill to help you get a raise at work or to help you, you know, maybe move up a job level at work. It can be a new language that will help you be better at things around you, right? I live in a highly bilingual area, so it would behoove me to brush up on my horrible Spanish that I took in high school and can barely say any of anymore. So it would behoove me to work on that, right? That's something I can work on. Work on something to improve your life. Learn a new skill. Learn accounting. Learn marketing. Learn a new language. Learn a programming language. Learn how to work on electronics. Learn how to operate a camera. Do something that improves your life and gives you a new tangible skill this year. It is a surefire way to improve your year. Since you guys have stuck around, I do appreciate you guys sticking around to the end of the show. Here is the key to all this, okay? This is the absolute key. Anybody who bailed on me earlier, you're going to miss out. They're they're missing out because this is the important part. All of this only works, okay? The big secret to making all this, all six of these points work, right? And remember, I'll recap here. Uh, Get your finances in order. Learn about your finances, guys. Turn off the television. Stop wasting time. Audit your time and stop wasting it. Find something to volunteer with. Do volunteer work. Be more physically active and learn a new skill this year. But the key to all six of these things that makes it all work together, pulls it together, is you have to take ownership of yourself and your life. You have to take what Jocko Willink, or however you say his name, I'm pretty sure I butchered it every time I ever say it. You have to take what Jocko calls extreme ownership, guys. Unless you own you, take full responsibility for you, for every choice, for every decision, for everything you're going to do, unless you take full ownership of yourself, you're not going to accomplish any of this. Because if you don't take ownership, if you try and blame other people, if you try and put this up on other people, then you're approaching the wrong attitude. It's not going to work for you. Because only by having ownership do you have the ability to accomplish these goals. If you say, well, I can't do that because so-and-so or because of my job or because of this, then you don't have control. and then, Then you're right. You can't do it. But if you take ownership and decide, I have control over this, because you do. You have control over to you, which means you have control over all these things. You will absolutely have the very best 2021 that you could ever have. And it can be the best year of your life, no matter what your situation is currently. Take these tips to heart. Own yourself. Be responsible for yourself. And you will have the best year of your life. This is the Fallible Man podcast. We're grateful that you've been here with us. Be better tomorrow because of what you did today. And I'll see you next time, guys. This has been the Fallible Man Podcast. Your home for everything man, husband, and father. Be sure to subscribe so you don't miss a show. Head over to www.thefallibleman.com for more content and get your own Fallible Man gear.